number 57 featuring a relatively obscure but nevertheless very innovative role-playing game Kevin Kenny's Tunnels of Doom <laughs> Really great little game, uh, a real gem, uh, one of the standout titles for the really sadly short-lived TI-994A. Uh, that's the platform from Texas Instruments. It was, uh, you know, even with a company as big as Texas Instruments behind it, and a great advertising campaign uh, headed up by Bill Cosby. The home computer from Texas Instruments. This is the one. Uh, the system never really had a chance. Uh, nothing wrong with it so much as it just had to compete with the juggernaut, the Commodore 64. I think it's still the best-selling computer of all time. And it was really, uh, the other guys just couldn't compete with it. Tandy, uh, the Tandy Coco, the TRS-80, all these sort of faded out uh, once the 64 uh, dominated the industry. And that's uh, sort of sad. I mean, Kevin Kenny, uh, he developed his masterpiece game and, and no sooner does it hit the shelf than he's laid off. Uh, from Texas Instruments. You know, that sucks for him, but it also sucks for us because he was going to make all kinds of great expansions for this. That was sort of the idea was that Tunnels of Doom was a system and then you would buy um, scenarios for it, like a spy scenario, science fiction scenarios. And, you know, some people did go back and make some of these and sort of as an amateur sort of hobby projects. We get a Star Trek one and a Doctor Who one. I've been uh, unable to, to locate those. And so if you know how I can get them up, please let me know. But anyway, what makes this game so great is that it combines role-playing with strategy. We get a turn-based strategic combat sequence way ahead of its time. I mean, we won't get anything like this until uh, we get to uh, Wizard's Crown and, of course, Pool of Radiance. A wonderful game, one of my favorites, and the subject of the very first match at. So anyway, we've got a lot to talk about. It's a wonderful game, very accessible game. So without further ado, here is Tunnels of Doom. So here we are in Tunnels of Doom. One of the cool things, I don't know if uh, you might not be aware of this, but this game randomly generates or procedurally generates its content every time. So you get a new dungeon, uh, new locations for the quest items, a lot of replay value there. It's very cool. Uh, you can create up to four people or one sort of superhero type. I thought about that, but it's more fun with some friends. Now apparently people would get their friends over and have each of the friends make the decisions in combat. <laughs> I'm thinking that might result in actual combat if your friend doesn't think you are following his orders. The rest of this is pretty standard stuff. Fighters, wizards, and rogues. There are no healers. There are no priests. No clerics. Oh my god, what are we going to do? Uh, we'll just have to kill the monsters first. I'm really liking this incidental music composed by one Hank Mishkoff, who had a bit of a mishap because TI, Texas Instruments, had him write this music for another game entirely. They didn't use it, but then they recycled it into this game. Apparently it fits. Okay, now it's time for fun. Oh, wait a minute. No, 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 no. Now we get to go on a shopping spree. Yes, like most role-playing games, it begins with a shopping spree. So you whip out the MasterCard here. We're going to put some stuff on it. Uh, now, like most games uh, that start like this with the shopping, you can have better armor and worse weapons or better weapons and, and worse armor. It's kind of up to you. Or you can try to hedge your bets by going with the mid-range stuff all the time. But one thing to keep in mind is your characters can only hold two weapons and one type of armor. 
So if you find anything else, you have to trade it or drop it. And also there's some course class restrictions. You can't have a mage running around in plate armor. Never quite understood that, but I'm, I'm sure it makes sense. I guess these guys are kind of nerdy. You know, <laughs> they can't be seen with all those pads on. Now, uh, another important thing is the ranged weapons. You want to make sure you give those to your wizards and rogues. Uh, otherwise, those guys are just going to be standing around not doing anything. So give them a sling. They can pick up rocks and throw them at the monsters. It actually works better than you might think. You can also get these bows and, and so on, but that's a, that's a pain you have to worry about ammo. Uh, you'll also need to buy rations. That's very important because that's the way your characters heal. If you don't have any rations, you're going to die pretty quick. So get a few extra quarter pounders for the road. I'll resist the joke about being rational. Okay, let's move on. Now there's a couple of different movement screens you have to get used to. There's that top-down view, and then there's a 3D view that's coming up. When I started off, I think it's always a good idea to look at your character sheets. Uh, make sure you've got all the items you thought you purchased. Uh, take a look at this. you got 24 moves or 24 turns to find the king, 28 to find the rainbow orb. The rainbow orb. Okay. All right, so there's a shot of the map. Oh, I mean, uh, this game just has so many features. I mean, auto mapping. How cool is that? 1982. I... Somebody like me with severe directile dysfunction really, <laughs> really depends on that auto map. So thank you, Kevin, for that. Now, here we are looking at this um, dungeon and the map. Uh, this is an unusually clean dungeon, as you can see. It was actually used in a Mr. Clean commercial <sighs> to show what could be accomplished with a little elbow grease in the, in the right product. But these bright primary colors can be scary. If you just sort of uh, imagine uh, something with, without bright primary colors. Okay, here's a... Uh, I somehow already found the room with the stairs down, but as you can see, I need to find a map before I can go down the stairs. Uh, that makes sense uh, somehow, but anyway. Yeah, just play the game, people. All right, here is the door. Now I can listen at the door and hear monsters. But one of them has already jumped out at me. So here we are in that famous turn-based tactical combat mode. Uh, Matt here. You have to keep up with the, what you named your characters uh, based on their colors. And you can attack diagonally. That is, of course, historically accurate. Uh, we didn't... Soldiers didn't figure out how to do that until well into the Renaissance. <gasps> now you get two turns, if you will, each turn, or two uh, action points, whatever you want to call it. Uh, the first is to move in a direction. And the other is your attack. Uh, you can also change weapons. Uh, that counts as a move. You can also have your wizard cast a spell off a scroll. But again, that's kind of wasteful. You probably want to save that for a major conflict. These battles tend to play out pretty quickly or pretty slowly, uh, depending on how much thought you want to put into each move. Uh, I'm using a ranged attack there from the wizard. I could also move my guys around. Sometimes the monsters can attack you from a distance and sometimes they have to be up close, so you can see their character sheets here. Another nice feature, there's a lot of uh, statistics and math uh, that's under the hood here, but uh, what I like about this game is that you can look at it any time you want. There's also mini-games, if you can believe that. Uh, there's this vault mini-game where you have to guess a combination. Uh, based on the clues it gives you, it tells you how many numbers you have right and whether the total is above or below the actual combination. You know, people that build vaults really need to think about the, the wisdom of putting a system like that in place. Uh, but here we are. I found some items. I've got a dagger here. You can see I'm trying to figure out who's got some room left. But I've also found the king! You thought he was dead, but no. He's been here all along. I had to keep him waiting, though. We had to make sure we got all the coins and the, and the armor and the daggers and such. Okay, let's move on. Now here I am at the last battle. I have to fight these snakes, and then I'll get this rainbow orb. Can't wait. Unfortunately, I took a little bit too long to get here, and it's already out of fashion. 
And that's all for this week's Matt Chat. I hope you guys enjoyed it. It's been a great week for us over at armchairarcade.com. Uh, we've been updating and upgrading, so if you get a chance, uh, please log on there to uh, www.armchairarcade.com. Uh, you can become a member by using the contact uh, contact us uh, submission form there. I'd uh, love to see you there. Uh, we've got all sorts of great blogs and forums, and that's where I'll be posting the John Romero podcast. should be available there any day now, <laughs> so stay tuned. I thought I would leave you with a quotation. I don't know the key to success, but the key to failure is trying to please everybody. A little wisdom there from Bill Cosby. See you guys next week.